write your name <coughs> and roll number in the chat box. Two minutes remaining, we will start. We will just do the revision of the last lecture. Last lecture, we seen about the nucleophilic substitution reactions in case of alkyl halides. Nucleophilic substitution reactions are very easy reactions in which just a nucleophile is substituted. There are two types of reactions. SN2 reaction and SN1 reaction. SN2 reaction means the name itself, it is given substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction. Bimolecular means the rate of reaction depends upon the two reactants. Substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reactions mainly takes place when the alkyl halide is primary, methyl bromide plus OH minus. OH minus this nucleophile will be generated either by KOH or NOH and we gives the we get the product methyl alcohol plus Br minus. See here in this reaction rate of reaction is directly proportional or is equal to K. It is a rate constant in bracket it is a return concentration of CH3Br and concentration of OH minus. These two factors responsible to make this reaction bimolecular, remember. Bimolecular, the name itself suggests this reaction depends upon the two reactants. And one more thing I want to explain. If the reaction is carried out in four steps or five steps or six steps, 
out of these six steps or seven steps, uh, may, uh, a, many reactions are carried out in two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps reaction. There are many reactions. But out of these steps, only the slow step decides the rate of reaction. Means in this reaction, as this rate depends upon the two things, these two things should be included in the rate determining step. Always rate determining step is a slow step reaction. Remember this thing. The reaction's rate determining step is always slow step. Means if the concentration of CH3Br and concentration of OH minus, this should be included in a rate determining step. If you didn't understand these things, only concentrate. This is not asked for exam actually, but you should know what is mean by rate determining step? What is the slow step? It is given in this paragraph. I am going to explain this paragraph. See, the rate of the chemical reactions is influenced by or affected by the chemical species taking part in the slowest step of its mechanism. In the above reaction, only two reactants are present and both are found influence the rate of reaction. This means that the reaction is a single step reaction. 100% this reaction will be single step because, because these two reactants are included in this reaction. This shows that the two changes, namely bond breaking and bond formation takes place simultaneously. With the mechanism clearly, it will be seen see the mechanism of this reaction is into mechanism this may be as for your exam for one mark or two marks the question will be like this explain the mechanism of s2 reaction so we have to draw such type of diagram there see this is a ch3 see here this is a carbon this hydrogen is uh, in the plane this bromine is also in the plane this hydrogen is wedge shape, is above the plane, and this uh, dotted hydrogen is below the plane or behind the plane. See, this OH minus is the nucleophile. This OH minus nucleophile always attacks backside of the bromine. See, this is the direction of the bromine, and this is the direction of the OH minus. Always, this nucleophile attacks from the backside of the bromine because if this OH minus attacks from this side. This Br is already negative and this nucleophile is also negative. The ne negative negative repulsion is also there. So the front side attack is uh, not allowed from this side. So always it attacks from the back side. It is very easy for the nucleophile to attack from the back side. So this is RDS. RDS means rate determining step. This is a rate determining step. See. In the transition state, this OH minus is uh, the bond between OH minus and this carbon is dotted line. It is shown. This is partially uh, uh, formation, partially formed, and the CBR bond is partially broken. So this uh, step is called as transition state. This is higher energy state in the reaction. The transition state. See, this is a penta coordinate. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a highly unstable, highly unstable step. And this is a high energy step. And in the next step, this OH and this carbon bond will be formed and the bromine CBR bond will be broken. So this is a SN2 mechanism. There are some salient features of SN2 mechanism. I will explain. This is single step mechanism. In the single step, this reaction is occurred in which simultaneously bond formation which bond is formed here? OH minus and C bond is formed. And the bond between this carbon and bromine is completely removed. Backside attack of the nucleophile. See, uh, once again, I'm explaining this OH minus is attacks from the backside. Because it is uh, uh, very easy to attack from this side because no negatively charged any nucleophile is present. The nucleophile attacks the carbon undergoing the substitution from opposite side of the living group. This Br is a living group. It will be removed and the COH bond is formed. 
there is no any steric repulsion or there is no any steric hindrance it is very easy to nucleophile to attack from this side so back side attack of the nucleophile is the second salient feature then third one is the transition state in the transition state already i have explained here in the transition state it is highly unstable it is having the high energy which contains c oh bond is partially form and cbr bond is partially broken uh, transition state contains penta coordinate carbon having the three sigma bonds the uh, see this three sigma bonds are there and which is having the angle 120 with each other and two partial covalent bonds along the line perpendicular these are the two partial covalent bonds when sn2 reaction is brought about the chiral carbon see if the instead of this ch3 instead of this ch3 is uh, optically inactive because all the different groups are attached here uh, sorry all the same groups are attached hydrogen is same hydrogen is same this hydrogen is same instead of this uh, hydrogen 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 is optically active compound is taken it is clearly seen that the product found having the opposite configuration compared to the substrate in other words we can say the reaction is found to proceed with inversion of configuration see this mechanism clearly in this also inversion of configuration is seen see this position of this hydrogen in the reactant and see the position of wedge shape hydrogen in the product see if this oh minus attacks here they see the dotted dotted hydrogen means which is uh, below the plane see the position is uh, inverted completely and see the position of this hydrogen it is also inverted so when optically active substance is used here clearly it is seen but also in this example also it is shown inversion of configuration takes place means when the nucleophile attacks it is called as walden inversion inversion of configuration is the result of back side always remember this inversion takes place when the nucleophile attacks from the back side of the leaving group this is the main indication means inversion of configuration is a index uh, induction of back side attack so this is very simple reaction sn2 mechanism main point i'm again i'm going to discuss with you this is a one step reaction in which primary alkyl halide reacts rate determining step is uh, uh, only one step this is only one step reaction and which decide the rate of the reaction transition state is formed this is highly unstable coh bond is partially formed cbr bond is uh, partially broken and in the product clearly it is seen the inversion of configuration this is a simple reaction it is asked for three marks or uh, two marks or four marks in the reaction in the examination then sn1 reaction it is a totally opposite to the sn2 reaction sn1 indicates substitution nucleophilic unimolecular reaction now it is very easy to understand the sn1 reaction because already i explained sn2 reaction with you one indicates this is a unimolecular see here clearly it is seen rate of the reaction is depend on only one reactant see the concentration of tertiary butyl bromide here in case of sn2 reaction we used here methyl bromide in case of sn1 reaction it is favorable with tertiary butyl bromide means tertiary alkyl halides are used here and the concentration of the reaction is depend on only one reactant that reactant is called as tertiary butyl bromide means the rate it is clearly indicated here rate of the reaction is equal to the k k is rate constant in bracket concentration of the thrice ch3 cbr means this reactant tertiary butyl bromide it can be seen in the reaction that concentration of only one substrate appears in the rate equation this is a two step reaction see i am directly coming to the mechanism because with the mechanism clearly we can understand this reaction sn2 reaction is a one step reaction but sn1 reaction is two step reaction don't get confused between the words and the steps sn2 one step sn1 two step reaction remember sn2 primary alkyl halide is used 
In SN1 reaction, tertiary alkyl halide is used. In case of SN2 reaction, there is a one transition state. In case of these uh, SN1 reaction, there are two transition states. Now the step one, what is happening in the step one? See clearly, the CBr bond is broken. CBr bond is broken. This is a slow step. We get the carbocation here. Carbon having the positively charged faces, it is called as carbocation. See the carbocation is formed in the first step. In the second step, what is happening? The nucleophile attacks. Now, now there is no bromine here. No bromine here, so the OH can be attacked from this side also, OH can be attacked from this side also, below, from right hand side, from left hand side, any side the OH can be attacked. So backside attack is not there. Remember, in case of SN2 reaction is backside attack is there because one side bromine is there. In this reaction, bromine is already removed, carbocation is formed, and in the second step, the carbocation OH minus attacks to the carbocation from any side and we get the product tertiary butyl alcohol. There are also some salient features of the SN1 mechanism. This is two step reaction. In the first step, uh, by using heterolysis, CX bond is broken, means this CBR bond is broken. It is a reversible, means again this bromine can attack to the carbocation. Again, we can get back the tertiary butyl bromide. So in the first step, heterolysis takes place, CX bond is broken, it is the slow step of the reaction and the carbocation is formed. Then in the second step, what is happening? Attack of the nucleophile. Nucleophile is same in SN1 and SN2, OH minus is nucleophile. Attack of the nucleophile can be takes place, it is very fast step. Then the next one, when SN1 reaction is carried out in chiral carbon, means we have to check it. We have to check it. Attacks of nucleophile, uh, nucleophile takes place from right hand side or left hand side or from below. If the optically active uh, reactant is used, optically active reactant means the carbon atom should contain four different groups. If four different groups are used and the attack of the nucleophile takes place, you will see in here, you will see near racemization takes place. Racemization means 50% dextro and 50% leo compound is formed. And in case of SN2 reaction, see, in SN2 reaction, 100% inversion product is formed, means 100% dextro or 100% leo product will be formed. That is called as inversion. Inversion means, see here clearly in this diagram, again I am showing the positions of these groups are changed. This is called as inversion. And retention means, retention means position of these groups remains same. This is called as retention. This can be clearly seen when optically active reactants are used. Retention means here, uh, OH minus can attack from this side or OH minus attack can this side. So the racemization takes place here. Racemization means 50% dextro and 50% leo products are formed. So it is called as racemization. This is happening because, because this is a carbocation is planar and the OH minus can attack from any side. So these are the salient features of the SN1 and SN2 reactions. Remember, these are very easy reactions. Don't get confused. Totally different in SN2 primary alkyl halide is used. In SN1 reaction, tertiary alkyl halides are used. Now I'm coming to the homework. This homework is given. If you understand the reaction, you can answer these questions. Then next one. Factors affecting on SN1 and SN2 reaction. There are three fact, uh, four factors which affects on the SN1 and SN2 reaction. First one is nature of substrate. Directly I am explaining, see this diagram. SN1 reaction is favorable in tertiary alkyl halides and SN2 reaction is favorable in primary alkyl halides. Then next point, see, this diagram clearly indicates what is happening. See, this is a transition state of SN2 reaction. See, this is a transition state. This is also the CH3. Bulkiness increases here. If the bulkiness increases, the crowding also increases and the rate of SN2 reaction decreases. If the bulkiness is more, it is a 
difficult for the nucleophile to attack here. See, this CH3 is bulkier group, CH3 is bulkier group, this CH3 is bulkier. It is very difficult to attack the nucleophile here. So, in case of uh, SN2 reaction, this uh, primary alkyl halides are favorable. And in case of tertiary alkyl halides, see this in the tertiary alkyl halides, the carbocation is stabilized because of the plus I effect here. See, and the hyperconjugation. There are two effects. The stability of this carbocation is dependent upon the two things. First one is, uh, see these arrows, one, two, three, these three arrows means due to the plus I effect, the carbocation is stabilized. That's why uh, in case of SN1 reaction, tertiary, tertiary alkyl halides are used or it is favorable due to the steric effect and, uh, sorry, due to the plus I effect and hyperconjugation, this is carbocation is stabilized and it is favorable in SN1 reaction. So it is given here tertiary halides undergo SN1 mechanism, primary halides undergo SN2 reaction and if the secondary halides are used, they can undergo mixed mechanism. They can undergo SN1 or SN2 mechanism. This depends upon the conditions used. So these questions are asked for JE or NEET or CET exams. What will happen to the tertiary halides? Tertiary halides undergo dot dot type of mechanism. Then primary halides undergo dot dot type of mechanism. Remember. Then the second factor which affects the nucleophilicity of the reagent. Nucleophile. To understand the nucleophilicity, you should know the nucleophile. Nucleophiles are the species which are the negatively charged species which use electron pair to form the bond with carbon. See, if the nucleophile is more powerful, firstly it will favor the SN2 mechanism. Because in SN1 mechanism, the role of nucleophile is not there because in the first step, carbocation is formed. And in the second step, only the nucleophile attacks. So, more powerful nucleophile attacks the substrates faster and favors the SN2 mechanism. Means, nucleophile, if the nucleophile is more powerful, it will attack fastly in SN2 mechanism. And in SN1 mechanism, it is independent of the nature of nucleophile because nucleophile doesn't affect the SN1 mechanism because in the first step uh, carbocation is formed and in the second step nucleophile attacks. So nucleophile does not react in the slow step of SN1. It waits till the carbocation is formed and then react. So uh, if the nucleophile is better, I will uh, explain some examples. Nucleophilicity increases down the group when the donor atoms are from the same group. In case of uh, group number 17, group number 17, all the halogens are there, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Iodine is better nucleophile than Cl minus. This is for your knowledge only. The question will be not asked on this part, below part. What is this uh, rectangle is given? No, any question will be asked here. But this is for knowledge purpose. I have given iodine is better nucleophile than the fluorine. And ammonia is powerful nucleophile than the H2O. The examples are given here. Then the solvent polarity. Remember the things only SN1 mechanism is favorable only polar protic solvents like water, alcohol, and acetic acid. SN1 mechanism is favorable in polar protic solvents and SN2 mechanism is favored in a protic solvents or solvent having the low polarity. This is explanation I have given why this is favorable, but it is not required to remember. Those students who are preparing for the competitive exams, read it carefully. Uh, other students only remember this SN1 mechanism is favorable in polar protic solvents like water, alcohol, and acetic acid. And SN2 mechanism is favorable in aprotic solvents or solvents with low polarity. This is a difference between SN2 and SN1 mechanism. This is not given in your textbook. I prepared this uh, difference because uh, it may be asked for board exam for two marks. So it is very easy. The factors are uh, given here. It is a second order reaction. Uh, SN1 is first order reaction. Molecularity is bimolecular, unimolecular. This is one step. This is a two step reaction. 
bond breaking and bond formation is simultaneous in case of SN2. SN1, first the carbocation is formed and then the nucleophile attacks. Transition state, there is one transition state. There are two transition state in SN1. Backside attack is favorable. And in case of SN1 reaction, the nucleophile can attack from backside also, from, from front side also, because the planar carbocation is formed. Stereochemistry, this stereochemistry is possible when optically active compounds are used, reactant is used. Inversion of configuration takes place here completely. And in case of SN1 reaction, racemization takes place, means 50% inversion and 50% ret retention takes place. Type of the substrate, in case of SN2 reaction, primary alkyl halides are favorable. In case of SN1, tertiary alkyl halides are favorable. Polarity, just I explained, Aprotic solvents favors SN2 reaction and mainly polar solvents favorable SN1 reaction. Nucleophile, strong nucleophile is favorable and in SN1 reaction is weak nucleophile is favorable because the nucleophile doesn't affect on the SN1 reaction because the role of the nucleophile is in the second step. And uh, SN2 reactions are very important. If the nucleophile is strong, it reacts faster. Intermediate, there is no intermediate in SN2 reaction and intermediate is involved. Which intermediate is involved here? Intermediate is the carbocation is involved in this reaction. So these are the some factors at the time of board exam. Only we have to write any four differences, remember. So go through it. These are also some questions given on the basis of the reactions. Now the elimination reactions. Nucleophilic substitution reactions are completed. Now I will explain elimination reaction. This word already you heard in 11th standard. The name itself suggests elimination means we have to remove some atoms or groups. See the definition, the reaction in which two atoms or groups of atoms are removed from the adjacent carbon atoms in a molecule to form unsaturated compound. Unsaturated compound means which contains carbon-carbon double bond. It is called as elimination reaction. Now, in the elimination reaction, one reaction we have to study here, dehydrohalogenation. Dehydrohalogenation means we have to remove H and X, hydrogen and halogen. Minus sign indicates Dehydrohalogenation means we have to remove it. Hydrohalogenation means we have to add hydrogen and halogen. D means we have to remove dehydrohalogenation reactions. What is this dehydrohalogenation reactions? We have to remove this hydrogen and halogen. Halogen is uh, attached to the carbon. That carbon is called as alpha and nearer to this alpha, it is called as beta. Beta carbon and beta hydrogens are, uh, sorry, beta carbons and alpha carbons are there in the reaction. See here, I will explain. See here, location of the alpha beta carbons. The halogen X is attached to the carbon atom. This carbon is called as alpha. And nearer to this alpha, this is a beta carbon. This is a alpha, beta, gamma, delta, so on. So if, if another carbon atom is here, it will be again beta 1 and beta 2. So you understand the location of the alpha beta carbons in a molecule. Elimination in elimination reaction, this alpha is removed. Uh, alpha halogens are removed and beta hydrogens are removed. So this is also called as 1, 2 elimination. It is also called as beta elimination. See in this reaction, uh, what is mean by dehydrohalogenation? In case of dehydrohalogenation reactions, Again, the 10 minutes uh, remaining, we will uh, continue. When alkyl halides having at least one beta hydrogen, remember this, the alkyl halide having at least one beta hydrogen, it is boiled with alcoholic uh, KY solution, elimination takes place. Directly, I will take one example, then it is very easy to understand. See this uh, mechanism I have shown. This X is attached to the carbon. This carbon is alpha. It is clearly shown here alpha. Nearer to this alpha, this is beta carbon. 
and the hydrogens attached to the beta carbons are called as beta hydrogens so this is a base base always attacks on beta hydrogen and this x is removed means this h and this x is removed we get here unsaturated compound carbon carbon double bond yes as the hydrogen and halogen is removed this reaction is called as dehydrogenation reactions ha huh. now the main thing if there are two beta hydrogens then what will happen see if there are two betas in one reaction see here see the example here two bromobutane two bromobutane this is the carbon number 1 2 3 4 uh, on the second carbon bromine is there if the bromine is attached to this carbon this carbon automatically it becomes alpha and to nearer nearer to this uh, carbon this is beta 1 and this is beta 2 there are two beta carbons there are two beta hydrogens and there are three beta hydrogens are there now what will happen uh, this hydrogen and this halogen can be removed or one of the hydrogen from this beta 2 and this halogen can be removed thus there are two possibilities and two products will be formed so see the possibilities if the beta 2 hydrogen is removed beta 2 means this if this hydrogen is removed and this uh, halogen is removed we get double bond here see here we get the product but one in and in this uh, case in this case beta 1 see this hydrogen will be removed and double bond will be appeared here so again there is a confusion between these two products which is major and which is minor so to identify which is major and minor one uh, rule is prepared by the scientist russian scientist said zep one rule is prepared by the scientists and what is that rule i will explain that rule in case of elimination reaction in the hydrogenation reaction the preferred product is that alkene which has the greater number of alkyl groups attached to the double bonded carbon see in this product and in this product we have to see the double bonded carbon this is a double bonded carbon here there is no any ch3 group is attached here but in this double bonded carbon there is one ch3 group is attached and another ch3 group is attached so this is but2 in is the but2 in is the major product according to setzep's rule i think you understand the setzep's rule once again i am going to explain setzep's rule kya bolta hai ki in the elimination product the product contains maximum number of ch3 groups attached to the double bonded carbon we have to check the double bonded carbon this carbon and this carbon having the double bond the two ch3 groups are attached here this is one ch3 and this is second ch3 so this is the major product and uh, in this uh, but one in if you see the double bond here no any ch3 group is attached so this is a minor product and this is a major product this major and minor will be uh, products will be appeared when there are two beta hydrogens if the two beta hydrogens are not there we will get only one product and that is major so setzep's rule when we have to apply don't get confused uh, between markovnikov's rule and setzep's rule markovnikov's rule is uh, applicable when uh, reaction is addition reaction unsymmetrical alkene is there and unsymmetrical reagent is there and this rule is applied setzep's rule is applied in the elimination reaction when the two products are formed and to identify the major and minor we have to apply the setzep's rule which contains more number of ch3 groups attached to the carbon carbon double bond so in this reaction above reaction this is a but to in is a major product so these are the elimination reactions this part is eliminated uh, for this year make a note there elimination versus substitution no any question will be asked for this year only so this is a deleted portion for this year due to the covid 19 make a note elimination versus substitution this is eliminated now the reaction with metals first one is reaction with magnesium this reaction with magnesium is a very famous reaction it is called as formation of grignard reagent uh, for this reaction the scientist got nobel prize victor grignard name of the scientist i will explain first grignard reagent is what grignard reagent is a organometallic compound in which divalent magnesium is directly attached to the alkyl group and 
halogen atom means this magnesium is in between r and x see here the magnesium is in between r and x this is alkyl halide rx is alkyl halide and magnesium is incorporated between this r and x this such type of compounds are called as organo metallic compounds this is also delta minus this is also delta minus and this become 2 delta plus mg is 2 delta plus this is minus this is also minus grignard reagents are highly reactive so generally the question is asked how the grignard reagents are prepared grignard reagents are prepared when alkyl halide any alkyl halide we can take see this example directly any alkyl halide when it is uh, treated with magnesium metal in presence of dry ether the condition is very important we have to use dry ether as a solvent only the role of the ether is only solvent it do not reacts in the uh, reaction so we get the product ch3 mg br br is minus here delta is minus here and we uh, uh, get the two delta plus charges here on the magnesium this methyl magnesium bromide or methyl magnesium chloride such type of compound is called as grignard reagent remember this is uh, prepared by the scientist victor grignard who got the nobel prize for this reaction this is very very important methyl bromide when treated with magnesium in presence of dry ether methyl magnesium bromide or you can take ether ethyl ethyl bromide here we can take ethyl iodide here in uh, reaction with magnesium this is general uh, one example is given you can take any example if you can take any alkyl halide but the magnesium metal you have to take so this is the reaction with uh, magnesium metal then the next one is uh, uses of these grignard reagents where the grignard reagents are used and which type of products are formed these grignard reagents are very reactive compounds they can react with water also they can react with alcohols also they can react with ammonia and we get the uh, product c here this is rmgx this is methyl magnesium bromide or methyl magnesium chloride grignard reagent plus alcohol see what is the product here direct we get your hydrocarbons r and h this uh, methyl group combines with one of the hydrogen here we get hydrocarbon and this is by product mgx and och3 then again if it reacts with ammonia again it pick ups one hydrogen from this ammonia and we get the hydrocarbon when it reacts with water also we get the hydrocarbon r h and the by products are same mgoh x mg nh2 x mgx oh3 so this is a uh, useful for the neat and je and cet students remember this reactions carefully and for the board exam this is not asked for the board exam only the preparation of grignard reagent is asked now the next one is a reaction with sodium metal the reaction with magnesium is called grignard reagent and reaction with sodium metal is called as wurtz reaction or it is also called as wurtz synthesis i think in 11th standard we learned about this reactions wurtz reaction in which the formation of higher alkanes after this one minute this lecture will be uh, finished again we have to join for 10 minutes only so within that 10 minutes i will uh, complete this chapter so after this one minute the meeting will be end again we have to join it i will continue the lecture for 10 minutes and in this 10 minutes we will complete this chapter so reaction with sodium this reaction is called as wurtz reaction formation of higher alkanes this is asked for two marks grignard reagent is also asked for two marks this uh, reaction is also asked for two marks yes the reaction of sodium metal alkyl halides reacts with sodium metal again we have to use here dry ether as a solvent to form the higher alkanes this reaction is already seen in 11th standard 